we have to have a major, major, major overhaul of how the financial yes. system works. Yes. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. and there's all kinds of ideas and Barack and I are putting together a plan, but you can't do this, you can't do this haphazardly. It's important to be done thoughtfully so we never repeat this again. With the brain. But let me, that's a, that'd be useful. That'd be useful. That'd be useful. But I tell you what, part of the solution is ending the cowboy mentality. Yeah. These guys ripped away. They ripped away the consumer protections that were designed to help you and your investment. They shredded. They actually had a ceremony, remember, with a chainsaw showing how we're cutting through these regulations. They actually denied, as a matter of law, the Attorney General of Virginia, the Attorney General of Delaware and California, etc., under the Bush administration with McCain's support, could not sue national banks for predatory lending. They took away the authority. Ladies and gentlemen, these guys have worshipped. They have worshipped at the shrine of deregulation. John McCain proudly said not long ago on Wall Street, I'm quote, I'm always, I'm always for less regulation. Well, something happened to John on the road to Damascus. I watched him the last three days. 10 a.m. on Monday, he said, 9 a.m. on Monday, literally, he said, the fundamentals of the economy are strong. 11 a.m., he said, we're in crisis. Well, like I said, there's been a conversion on the way to Damascus. The boy fell off his horse. But guess what? He got back up on the same horse. You got to change horses, folks. This is a guy. This is... There's a lot to talk about with the economy. But I want to focus on one aspect of the economy. The most devastating aspect of what of what this is what this economy has done. What I want to talk to you about today is the impact, the impact on women, ladies and gentlemen. Is this working now? The, the handheld. Yeah. The impact on women. You all know the deal, folks. When the economy goes south, who are the first people who get hurt the most? It's women. It's women. And I tell you what. We're going to change that because here's the deal. We've got to restore both the protections and the dignity, the dignity of work, the dignity women and others deserve in the workplace in their own lives. Because, because when the economy goes south, as I said, it's women who go, whether they're making the minimum wage or they're working for a major corporation. As my dad used to say, don't tell me what you value. Show me your budget, and I will tell you what you value. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd add to that, also tell me what you believe. Well, let's start with the believing part. John McCain didn't believe there was a need for the Violence Against Women Act. He voted against it. He said, he voted against the crime bill that contained it. He said it was unnecessary and overregulated. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he said it was ineffective and ill-conceived. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tell that to the 1.5 million women who found it necessary. Tell that to the tens of thousands of women who found shelter for, with their children out of their home. Tell that to the tens of thousands of women in America who were able to get stay-away orders to enforce them. So if that man came within, he would be arrested. I guarantee you, I guarantee you it was necessary. It was not only morally right, it was necessary. And ladies and gentlemen, John McCain voted 19 times against the minimum wage. 19 times. Who are the people on the minimum wage? Women. Women are the majority of people on the minimum wage. No, ladies and gentlemen, if he had his way, the minimum wage literally, I'm not making this up, would literally still be $3.35 an hour. Try raising a child. Try giving them a decent environment. When in fact, even on the raised minimum wage, to be able to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, and now, now there are about 10,000, 10,000 women, or excuse me, tens of thousands of women who have social security that's the only way they can make it. They're older, their husbands are gone, they half of them only have the social security left than their husband's social security. Imagine, 
Imagine if John McCain's proposal to privatize and put the money in the market were in the grain today. Ima no, literally. I mean, just think. We don't have to. We don't have to. You know, it's not like a democratic scare tactic. Imagine if all that money that he wanted to put into the market were in the market today. Literally, literally, tens of thousands of elderly women, women would be in a desperate situation, more desperate than they already are. You know, John's a good guy, he's a decent man, he's been a friend of mine, I knew him for four years even before he got into the United States Congress. He was a Navy liaison, as I travel the world as a member of the Foreign Relations Committee, he was the guy that, that came along and did the advance for me. But I'll tell you one thing I've known about John for a long time, he doesn't believe the government should do anything about the disparity between the wages paid to a man and the same wage that should be paid to a woman but is not paid. John not only voted against equal the Equal Pay Amendment, John even voted twice against the right for us to call for a study of the disparity. He voted twice against the study, ladies and gentlemen. He even voted against the oven and when Barack Obama and I tried to rectify the Ledbetter decision. You all know what that was. We passed a law, which I'm very proud of, and it said, hey look, here's the deal. If a woman finds out she is being discriminated against in the workplace, she can sue. Right. And guess what? Because of the Supreme Court John McCain liked and the, the justices he voted for, what was the decision? It's true you were discriminated against, Ms. Ledbetter, but guess what? You didn't find out quick enough, so therefore you don't get any recovery. And as we try to recover, as we try to rectify that decision, John McCain. John McCain, I assume Sarah Palin, I don't know. We I assume either. that. They say they want to make sure that when they get to a point, if they were to win, and they'll, the next president, if the actuarial tables work at all, is likely to appoint from one to three new justices, maybe four. And ladies and gentlemen, guess what? They are not Roberts. They are not Scalia. They are not Thomas. And they are not, they are not Alito. They're likely to appoint justices who have been the last bulwark against against the onslaught of women's rights. Not just the right to choose, but across the board. Across the board. And what do John and Sarah Palin say? They say that they want to appoint more Scalia's, more Roberts, more Alito's. These are, these are decent, bright guys, but they are dead, dead, dead wrong. And ladies, once they are on the court, they will be there long after, long after the next president is gone. They'll be there for 30 more years.